I am Barnaby Bumble, and I'm happy to see you today, or happy for you to see parts of me. Um, this channel is going to be primarily about fountain pens and papers and inks and all the assorted goodies that go along with those. It's possible that at some point I will expand uh, into other things, but that's definitely where we're going to start. Uh, I hope it's useful for you. Uh, I'm doing this because uh, Stephen Brown, YouTube user SBRE Brown, or as he says it, SBRE Brown, which gives me no end of pleasure, um, sort of uh, inspired me to do this. So hopefully uh, more fountain pen users will start doing it as well, and uh, we'll all get a little better idea of what all's out there and how it might suit us. I'm going to do an introductory video at some point and kind of talk about some of that stuff. But for now, I just want to give you sort of a preview of some things that we'll be looking at in the days ahead. Um, I've got pens, I've got inks, I've got papers, and I've got uh, cases. So let's see. Uh, well, here's a little sheet of blotting paper, Jayabran. Uh, we may or may not look at that. I'll certainly be using it during the reviews, I would imagine. Uh, it's mainly there to give my camera something to focus on for the moment. All right, let's see. How about this one? This is a pen everyone is familiar with, I would imagine. This is the Lamy 2000 in Macrolon with the nifty spring-loaded clip. I've had this for a little while now. Uh, it's, it's kind of a nifty writer. It's extremely well made. Um, this one is in the fine nib, uh, which I think gives this pen some slightly different qualities from what uh, Steven and Aziza um, recently discussed in their, um, what do they call those reviews? Well, whatever they're called that they do together. Oh, serious nibbage. There we go. Or Zeria's nibbage. All right, so there's the Lamy 2000. We'll look at that. Also, in the upcoming days, this is the Pelican. I realize it's a German company, and so therefore Pelican. Uh, but I have an American tongue that, that doesn't do those sorts of things very well. So um, even though I actually used to know German reasonably well, that was a long time ago. So I'm going to say Pelican, and this is one. This one is the M800 in the limited edition tortoise shell. Uh, well, I'll have to see. Hopefully the camera is picking up some of the nifty tortoise shellness of this. Uh, I guess uh, the guitar people would call this turtleoid. So I might say that as well. Uh, it's uh, brown. This one it has a medium nib. Uh, Nice, uh, I think these are 18 karat gold finishes. The nib I know is 18 karat gold. So we'll be taking a look at that one. Also up for review. This is a Franklin Christoph 1901. This one has the cherry ice rings here and here. here. Nib is the standard Franklin Christoph steel nib, not the uh, Mike Masayama uh, adjusted one. This is a fine nib as well. And uh, it's, it's been an interesting pen. I've had a couple different inks in it, and it, 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 it seems to vary a fair bit with the ink. So we'll see about that. last pen I'm going to uh, at least show you right now is this one. This is an Omas Vintage Ogiva. This is in the, uh, they call this Saft Green. It's sort of a, a marbled flecked sort of a finish. I like it. Fittings are rose gold. Generally I'm not a fan of gold on things. The, no matter what it is, you know, watches, jewelry, uh, what have you. And I'm especially not a fan of rose gold. But for some pens, and I assume for other things as well, 
Uh, gold is just what suits the pen the best. And in this case, even rose gold uh, is what suits this pen the best. And on top of that, it's the only finish you can get it in. So, you know, I thought, well, I'll get that one. This has a medium nib as well. This is an extremely wet writing pen. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit of an ink cannon. It, it arrived not entirely well tuned. Uh, the nib tines were misaligned. Uh, but it didn't take long to straighten that out. And uh, yeah, it's wet and it's smooth. Uh, so we'll talk about that one. Also enjoy the little uh, wheelie ball on the clip. Let's see, what else? Well, underneath Mr. Urban's blotting paper here, I also have uh, a notebook. This one is from uh, paperforfountainpens.com. This is the one that uh, Matt Armstrong and some other folks love so much. This is the Tomo River paper. And the, uh, this is uh, cream colored. And this is in the binding that um, Jay Potter does at Paper for Fountain Pens. Uh, this is a really nice notebook. Uh, it's, it's almost like a banker's ledger or a uh, it reminds me a little bit of a yearbook. I don't know if, if kids even have yearbooks anymore. It's been a long time since I was in school. But that's a little bit what it reminds me of. Uh, it's a very nice binding. The paper is terrific. Uh, I've written in it a fair bit here, a few pages worth, with several different inks. As you can see, my writing is not exactly what we would call um, professional. But I'm working on that. Hopefully it will get better. So, we'll look at that. I also have that in a smaller size. What else have we got? Let's see. We have this notebook, which is the Quo Vadis Habana. This one is black. Uh, I really like this notebook. Uh, this one is sort of ivory colored paper, I suppose is what that is. Uh, I have a little sheet of Rhodia in there to uh, use as my cover sheet. Um, I've written in it with several inks, several different pens, and uh, yeah, I really like it. The paper is terrific, and I really like the binding uh, and the cover. So we'll talk about that. What else? Let's see. Let me turn the other way here. We have got, move some pens, we have got this which is the uh, Leuchtturm notepad. This is the A5 size, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, I like this one a lot as well. This, is, this color is taupe, which I also like. Uh, I've written in it quite a bit. I also have my little sheet of uh, Rhodia stuck in there for the cover sheet. Uh, I've actually torn some of the pages out of this one after I've written in it to uh, use elsewhere. Uh, very nice notebook. I like it a great deal. I don't have the problems with it that uh, at least some reviewers have had, so we'll talk about that a little bit. There's the Leuchtturm. Uh, and of course, you gotta have Rhodia. So here's a Rhodia dot pad. It's pretty much a standard Rhodia dot pad. Very smooth, very, very smooth paper, as you probably already know. So, we'll talk about that. Uh, particularly, with all of these items, I want to talk about how particular pens, especially nibs, obviously, inks and papers work together. Because I'm fairly new at this fountain pen hobby, but I do know already that nibs by themselves don't write. Nibs require ink, and ink has to be laid down on something, and normally most of us, that's paper. Uh, so this nib, ink, paper system uh, is what I'll talk about in a lot of these, because the experience can be very different, I I've learned, depending on what nib, what ink, and what paper. Some of these pens, 
uh, with uh, will write great on some of these papers. Others not as well, even though they might write great on other of the papers. What else? Uh, right, hang on, I've got to uh, move some stuff here because I didn't prepare properly. That's likely to be a theme of these videos, unfortunately, for you anyway. Uh, here's a little moleskin or moleskina notebook uh, I've had for a long time. I haven't used a great deal because, frankly, I'm not crazy about it. Um, but we'll do a little review of that. Uh, I have a, uh, a second version, because it was all I could get, of the Franklin Kristoff notepad. Uh, I don't remember the exact name of this model. I'll, I'll get that when I do the actual review. Uh, as you can see, the paper is a lovely sort of pinkish color, which I didn't expect, but, you know, whatever. Uh, and this is a second, so it may not be exactly what you would get uh, with a brand new, you know, first line item. So there's that. I also have... The Midori Traveler's Notebook. This is the full size. Uh, <clears throat> Some of you are going to notice right away when I start opening this thing that I have it upside down and backwards. So, strictly speaking, this is the front, that's the top. I don't use it that way. I use it this way. And we'll talk about why that is. So, there you go, there's some paper. I have have uh, have had several different refills of their various papers in this thing, and uh, the, the the short version is the pa some of the papers at least are are pretty nice. I'm not a fan of the notebook itself, and we'll talk about why that is. Uh, I believe that covers the notebooks. That brings us to uh, cases. This is my favorite case that I own at the moment. Uh, this is a Pelican case. This is their three pin case. Uh, I'm gonna tell you already that it will hold three pins, but they can't all be very big. So normally what I have in here is my, uh, the Franklin Kristoff 1901 that you saw and the uh, Pelican M800 that you also saw. Those are both fairly good sized pens, and uh, that leaves not a lot of space in the middle. You could probably put, you know, a ballpoint maybe or something in there, or, or a very small uh, fountain pen. Uh, this is my favorite of, my ca of the cases I have, and we'll talk about why that is. I have the uh, Aston leather. This is the tan color, 10 pen case. Uh, you see I've got a little piece of blotting paper stuck in there for carrying around on the road. Also got a little eyedropper in it. I have a little rollerball pen. I have a little Sharpie. And I have a Visconti traveling inkwell, uh, which is empty at the moment, but a uh, handy little item, and I'll, we'll talk about that at some point. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this case. Um, it, uh, the leather's nice enough. Uh, it's functional for the most part, but there's one thing about it that, that kind of puts me off, and we'll talk about why that is. And my, oops, my least favorite of the three cases I currently own, this also is an Aston. As you can see, all I've got in it is another G2 rollerball. Uh, this is the Aston 4-pin case um, in black. I'm not sure how well the color is showing up on the video since this is the first video, so we'll see. Um, I, I'm not crazy about this one. I, I, I don't use it much, to be honest, but we'll talk about it. Inks, uh, very briefly, I have got some Lamy Blue that came with something. I forget what it came with, but something or other. Uh, with a handy uh, blotting paper dispenser on the on the base, that's always handy. I have got Jayer Bans uh, Hematite, which I've not even opened yet. 
uh, because <laughs> I'm, I'm a little afraid to put it in any of the pens I currently own uh, right off the bat. They're all fairly expensive pens and, uh, you know, it's kind of a specialty ink. So I'm, I'm sort of waiting, I think I'm going to get like a Jin Hao, maybe, and try it in that first. So we'll, we'll look at that at some point. Here, with another little eyedropper stuck on it, is uh, Gerban Lidete, which uh, uh, Hair Brown, Stephen Brown, likes a great deal. I like it okay. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about why I'm only okay on it. Oops. I'm going to say oops a lot. I can tell already. Here is some Noodler's Ink. This is 54th Mass, which I am, let me just tell you right now, I'm going to repeatedly call this West 54th. Uh, because uh, for those of you in the States, there used to be a program on public broadcasting called Sessions at West 54th, which I was a huge fan of. And so I tend to call this West 54th. Or sometimes I'll even call it Sessions at West 54th, probably. Uh, this is a nice ink. I didn't like it as much as I expected to, uh, uh, but it's a nice ink. And we'll talk about what it's like to work with. Um, oh yes, right? We have Omas Black, which came with the uh, Omas pen that you saw earlier. We'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, and then I have a number of samples. Uh, some samples that I've already gone through that we'll talk about. This is uh, uh, Iroshizuku from Pilot. This is the Yamaguri, which is a brown ink. I have that in the, uh, in the that Omas pen at the moment. This is another Iroshizuku ink. This is Asagao, which is a blue ink, uh, which is in the Pelican M800 at the moment. This is Gerban Perle Noir, uh, a black ink that I like a great deal. Um, these are all from Goulet pens, as you can probably see. That is in the Lamy 2000 at the moment. This is Roar and Cleaner Verdigris, which I like a lot. I really like this ink. This is one of my favorites so far. I'm definitely going to be getting a bottle of this. Uh, so we'll talk about that. That was in the Omas previously. It, it ran out just yesterday. And so I, the, that's why it has the Yamaguri in it now. This is uh, Diamine Registrar's Blue Black. I like Blue Black inks a lot, so I decided to give this one a try. It's a nice ink. It was a little surprising. Uh, I had this in the uh, Pelican M800, and I, I unloaded it by accident. I, I knew I had run out of ink in one of my pens at the office, and when I got home, uh, I unloaded the wrong pen. So I didn't get to use this as much as I want, but we'll review it at some point. This is another Roar and Cleaner ink, Altgold Grün. Let me grab a drink of water here. Uh, this is an ink I like a great deal as well. That seems to be a, a theme for me so far with the uh, the Roar and Cleaner inks that I've tried so far. Uh, that is currently in, what is that in? That's in the uh, Franklin Kristoff 1901. Other inks coming up. Uh, I got the, uh, the Hiroshizuku sampler set from Goulet inks, so that's what a lot of these were in. This is Tsukiyo. Uh, I, I'm not going to tell you right now what uh, what the actual, you know, English name colors names of these colors are because frankly I don't know off the top of my head, but I'll tell you when we do the actual reviews. This is Shinkai. Uh, we also have over here Kujaku, or Kujaku, or however that would be pronounced by an actual Japanese person. I know that one's blue because I know Matt Armstrong has uh, has reviewed it and use it uses it a fair bit. Uh, Konpeki is over here and we've got uh, a Yamabudo which I th well that looks to be some sort of red burgundy-ish type color and Takisumi which I believe is a black. The others that I have over here I have three other blue blacks that I'm going to try. This is Noodler's Cuternity. We'll look at that. This is Private Reserve 
Midnight Blues, and this is the Fast Dry version. We'll look at that. Probably also in a less expensive pen since it's Fast Dry. And this is another Roar and Cleaner ink. This is Leipziger Schwarz, uh, which is a, a sort of, it's, um, it's uh, Schwarz is German for black. So you would think it's black, but it's actually sort of a blue black. And then these are black. This is Noodler's Black Eel, which is a lubricated ink. I wanted, wanted to try one of those. And this also is a Noodler's ink. This is L. Lawrence, or L. Lawrence. Uh, uh, I'm a big fan of Lawrence of Arabia, the film. Uh, so I thought I'd give this a try. And I, I, it sort of looked like an, an interesting, sort of almost brownish black. Uh, I didn't have to show you right at the moment. But we'll look at those. I have, uh, you know, there's a Conway Stewart. There's, uh, uh, I'm going to get that Jin Hao for trying some of these inks. So there's some other stuff on the way. Um, hopefully some of this will be useful. Hopefully I don't bore you absolutely to death. Uh, if I do, well, you know, it was nice sort of knowing you, uh, even though I don't actually know you. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's about it for now. So take care and, uh, you know, the videos are coming. So, see you later.